Hey there, thank you for joining me as we begin our journey through Holy Week. Um, Holy Week begins today on Palm Sunday, and it is the week that goes from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. And so this entire week, we will be journeying with Jesus on his trek through Holy Week. Today, we're going to talk about Palm Sunday, Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And then in the next coming days, we will look at some of the things that happened while Jesus was in Jerusalem. And then we will get to Thursday, which is called Monday Thursday. Jesus washes the disciples' feet. He has a last meal with his disciples. He goes to the garden to pray, and he gets betrayed. And then you have Good Friday. You have the trial of Jesus uh, as he gets charged with some made-up charges. He gets abandoned by his followers. He gets beaten and mocked and eventually crucified. And then at the end of Good Friday, Jesus goes into the tomb. And then you have Holy Saturday, where hope is lost. There, There is no hope. Nothing is changing. Nothing gets any better. It's the that pit of despair where you're just stuck in the middle of your despair. And it doesn't seem like anything's going to change. But then comes Easter Sunday, the third day, the final day of this Holy Week. And on Easter Sunday, we remember that the death, that the, the sadness, the despair didn't have the last word. Hope always came back. And... We get to celebrate that return of hope on Easter Sunday. But Holy Week doesn't begin with Easter. It begins today, on Palm Sunday, with the triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And um, all four of the Gospels record the triumphal entry. All four of them remember Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. Uh, they remember the, the crowds that gathered around. They uh, remember the people shouting out Hosanna. They remember people laying palm branches in front of Jesus' donkey. In fact, some people even laid their own cloaks on the ground in front of the donkey. And all of this worked together as a symbol to say Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was the great king returning from victory. He is coming to take his throne the people recognize him as king so that they don't want the donkey kicking up a bunch of dust. So they lay down palm branches in their own cloaks to prevent dust from getting kicked up. They are celebrating the fact that the rule of God is going to get started on earth. At least most of the people are celebrating that. But there are some people in Jerusalem who don't celebrate. They're the religious leaders the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees, they aren't celebrating. Um, in fact, in Luke's gospel account, we find out that they're asking Jesus to tell the people to be quiet. That, that all of these people need to be quiet because they should not be yelling these things. And Jesus' response is that if all of the people were quiet, the rocks themselves would cry out. Now, why would the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes not want the people to celebrate? Well, there are two reasons. Um, a generous reading would say um, having all of the people celebrate is a direct revolt against Rome. It is letting Rome know we are rebelling against you. We want no more of your rule. It is time to take the throne back by force. And the religious leaders probably knew they weren't in a position to do that. They would attempt to do that some 70 years later, and all of Jerusalem would be destroyed because the Roman legions were far too powerful for any rebellion that would start in Israel to actually succeed. So maybe the religious leaders are just trying to say, look, we can worship at the temple, we can worship as Jews within Rome. We need to not rebel like this. If we're going to try to rebel and establish our kingdom, we need to do it a bit more quietly. We need to be sneakier about it. Celebrating openly in the streets like this, especially during Passover, this is not the time, it is not the place. 
But I think it's more likely that the religious leaders are trying to tell Jesus to stop the people from celebrating because the religious leaders felt like Jesus was a threat. Jesus would would teach and do things that the le- religious leaders didn't agree with, but the people loved it. The, the religious leaders' authority was threatened by Jesus. Their power was threatened by Jesus. And the religious leaders are really trying to say, Jesus... You better stop it because we've tolerated you for a while. But if things like this keep happening, we aren't going to tolerate it anymore. So they tell Jesus, look, make the people stop. This has gone on far enough. But Jesus says that if the people stop, the rocks will cry out. And normally I have thought that what this meant was that rocks like this would start talking like I'm talking right now that this rock would start screaming, Hosanna. But between theology classes that I've taken, books that I've read, Christian songs that I've heard, I've had to think about that some more. And it's caused me to ask two questions. The first question is, uh, what does it sound like for a rock to cry out? And the second question that uh, will closely follow that is, Who said that the rocks weren't already crying out? Because Jesus didn't. Jesus didn't say, well, the rocks will start crying out. Jesus said that even if the people don't cry out, the rocks would. See, this rock right now is declaring praise of God. The sun that is shining is declaring the praises of God. This tree that's growing is declaring the praises of God. The birds that are singing are singing praises of God. Bible says that the heavens declare the glories of God. All of creation right now is singing praise to God, whether we have ears to hear it or not. The rocks are crying out, being a a solid rock. It might slip out of my fingers, but this rock, being a solid rock, is doing what God made it to do. It is praising God as a rock. And you and I were were made for the same thing. We're made to declare the praises of God, maybe through speech, maybe through art, maybe through helping other people, maybe through song. We are made to declare the praises of God. And if this rock is declaring the praises of God, shouldn't we do more? Shouldn't we be able to declare God's praise more fully, more powerfully, more faithfully than just a rock? Maybe we should, but how often are we? See, Jesus is is sitting there and the people are actually praising God at that moment. And the Pharisees are saying like, no, 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 we need to stop this. We need to stop doing all of this stuff. Maybe it's a threat to Rome and they're going to hurt us. Maybe, Jesus, you're too much of a threat. We need to stop you. Stop making the people praise God. And Jesus is saying, look, all of creation's praising God anyway. Why would I make these people stop doing what they're made to do? But we don't need Pharisees telling us to stop for us to stop praising God. We we do that easily enough. We distract ourselves to stop praising God. We fill up our time and we stop praising God. Sometimes we, we just choose not to. We just try to sit on the sidelines. You know, there were probably people in Jerusalem when Jesus was coming in who weren't the Pharisees trying to stop the praise of God and they weren't the people shouting praise to God. They just kind of sat there. And they, they watched. And they didn't really do anything. And, and this week, this holy week that we get to experience, we have this opportunity now and it's going to look very different this year with all of us quarantined we can't go into churches to praise god we can't go into groups of other people to praise god but there are still ways there are ways to show love to other people ways to remind people of how loved they are by god ways to praise god in the quiet of our own home 
ways to praise God, maybe outside of your house. This rock right now is praising God. And a quarantine can't stop it. A disease can't stop it. The religious authorities telling it that it can't do what it does can't stop it. So, are we going to meet the standard of this rock? Are we going to be better than this rock? Are we going to declare the praises of our Maker? That's the challenge for us this Holy Week as we continue to journey with Jesus. And my prayer for myself and my prayer for all of you is that you would find some way to declare the praise of God today. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to getting back with you for the rest of our Holy Week journey. God bless you.